In this tutorial, you will learn about the average rate of change. So typically when you have a linear function, you calculate the rate of change between two points by counting the rise and the run. But if you have a function that is nonlinear, you can still count the distance between the two points using the rise over the run, even though you're not following the curve of the graph. So the average rate of change is the straight distance between two very specific given points. So let's take a look at our first example. Okay, here we go. Calculate the average rate of change from a graph. So here's a function, a polynomial function that's graphed called f of x. And you are tasked with finding the average rate of change of the function over this very specific interval. So from 6 to 8. So if we were going to make a table, our table would have x values of 6 and 8. And we need to go get the y values. Now since we don't have an equation, we have to use the graph. So I go to my x-axis, to the number 6, and from there I have to find out where the graph is. So from 6 I have to go down to negative 8. So my point here would be negative 8. And then my second point, 8, it goes down one unit here, but look at the scale. It doesn't go by ones, and you have to be very careful today when you're looking at the scales. Because my x number line, that went by ones, but my y axis number line did not. So I'm not going to put a negative 1 here, I'm actually going to put a negative 2. Now again, the average rate of change is the distance from the first point in the interval to the second point on the interval. And you do take that straight line path. So the question is, what's the rise and what's the run? What's the rise and what's the run? So when I look at what the rise and run is between those two points, I can count those boxes, right? I can count those unit boxes uh, that are there on the graph, like up two, four, six, right? Up two, four, six, up two, four, six, and then over 1, 2, I could do it like that. Or I could use my slope formula. And it works for any average rate of change. So the first thing you do is set up your subtraction fraction. y minus y over x minus x. And it looks like I'm going to get here a positive 6. And it looks like I'm going to get here a positive 2, which is the same solution. Right? So 6 over 2 can be simplified, so you should enter your answer in simplified form. So the average rate of change here was 6 over 2, also known as 3. So let's take a look. All right, we got that one right. How about another problem? What is the average rate of change over the interval starting at 7 and ending at 8? Well, here's 7, and there's 8. So you're looking to count the average rate of change, or the rise and the run, right? So you're looking for that triangle or along a straight line type path. So we can count those boxes, but you need to be very careful that you're looking at the appropriate scale. So it looks like I go up by units, 10 units. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And it looks like I run over a single box, which is equivalent to 1. But I could also create my own table of points. Again, I create the table using the beginning and ending interval values. Then from there, I get the y values from looking specifically at the graph. 7 has a y value of 10, and 8 has a y value of 60. So when I do 60 minus 10 over 8 minus 7, I get 50 over 1. So the average rate of change for this function over the interval of 7 to 8 is 50 over 1, also known as 50. That's how you calculate the average rate of change from a graph. Now how about 
calculating the average rate of change if I give you an equation. So let's take a look at this one. So if I give you a function and I want the average rate of change, just like in the graph, I can create a table. Again, my table has to have a beginning and an ending value that is provided for me in the question. Now, how will I know what these are if I don't have a picture? Well, if you don't have a picture, you simply create your table of values. You simply create your table of values by using a calculator. So I'm going to open my graphing calculator now, and I'm going to enter my function into the y equals button. My function is negative x squared minus 4x plus 9 negative x squared plus 4x minus 9. Oh, plus 9? Yes, plus 9. Negative x squared plus 4x plus 9. So I go to my table, second table, and I grab those two numbers for 1. 1 is with 12, and 7 is with negative 12. So in my table, 1 was with 12, and 7 was with negative 12. Set up my slope fraction here, y2 minus y1 over x2, whoops, 7, minus x1, and it looks like I'm going to get negative 24 over 6, also known as negative 4. Fantastic. Want to try one more? Again, get your calculator out. Type the function into the y equals button. This time I have x squared plus 2x minus 6. Go look at your table and grab those y values for your given interval. So the given interval was negative four and three. Negative four and three. So I've got to actually arrow up my chart here. Negative four, two, and three, nine. Negative four, two, and three, nine. Those are my x and y values. Set up my slope fraction y minus y over x minus x. Notice I have two minus signs in a row here, so I'm actually going to get 7 over 7, also known as 1. So let's check it. Fantastic. Now, they're showing you the slope formula here, and they're using some crazy notation there, but all they're saying is go to function g and get its x2 value. Go to function g and get its x1 value. So don't be too freaked out by all of those letters on the screen there. They're simply showing you um, where they're getting the values from. Now they did it mathematically by putting in the number negative 4 for x and figuring out what y was. But why do all that fancy work when you've got a calculator? All right, so that's how you're going to complete this lesson today. Hopefully you don't have any issues with it, but you could always watch this video more than one time. Good luck.